But one of the street's top analysts thinks current Fed policy supports upside for the banks. Gerard Cassidy is the co-head of global financials research at RBC Capital Markets. He's a multi-year top-ranked analyst by Institutional Investor. Gerard, great to have you with us. Thank you, Melissa. So in terms of your expectations for the Fed, the baseline in terms of your bullish outlook for regionals is what in terms of cuts? Or is it sufficient to know that this is probably going to be max rates and we're only going to go lower from here? I think it's a combination of both, Melissa, because when you go back, the real unbelievable time for regional banks was going back to 1995 when Greenspan orchestrated the soft landing or the Goldilocks economy, as it was called. And he orchestrated, as part of that, two Fed fund rate cuts in July and December. And if we get one, maybe two rate cuts over the next 12 months, that is very positive for banks for the primary reason that funding costs now are stabilizing. And in a falling front rate or uh, short-term interest rate environment, the funding costs are going to go down, but the yields on their assets are still going higher because the cash flows coming off of those portfolios are at much lower coupons. So in an environment where the rates are now remain elevated, but are expected to come down between now and the end of 25, by let's call it 100, 125 basis points, that's very positive for net interest income growth for the banks. It's Karen. Thanks for being on, Gerard. So notably, in the last couple of days, J.P. Morgan has really underperformed on the mm -hmm. on the downside lower and then on the rally, you know, not participating. Um, I know you think it's a little bit expensive, but is there something else going on that would make you? Th is, is it the Jamie Dimon thing? What do you think is happening? It's an interesting question, Karen, because obviously J.P. Morgan in 2023 was the home run bank stock. It was the flight to quality stock. You remember just over a year ago, we had the banking problems, obviously, in the spring of 23. Everybody gravitated to J.P. Morgan, and they benefited dramatically through their stock price. And now I think what investors are seeing, when you look at the real GDP now number by the Atlanta Fed, which as of last week, they're calling for a 3.1 percent real growth in the second quarter. If we are in this soft landing, and we think we are, then it's risk on. So there's no need to own the safety of a JP Morgan. Valuation is on the high side, as you point out. Uh, not certain that the retirement of J Jimmy Dimon at some point in the future is a factor yet. But certainly, I think it's because risk on is playing, should play better over the next 12 months versus risk off. And JP Morgan is clearly risk off. Hey, Gerard, it's Tim. So in, in that vein, and we, we've had this conversation most of the show, which is that it's, it's a, a risk on environment or maybe it's not. But that's a, an interpretation from today. If you go back to pre SVB, banks were starting to re-rate again. Remember, banks were at a place where after a multi-year process and there's a lot of regulatory hurdles and bullseyes on them, but they were starting to give back more capital. They were starting to show actually a lot more free cash flow and they were starting to re-rate on multiple. Whatever multiple you think is important, it's probably a multiple of, of assets. G give me your thoughts on this because I think that's the most powerful part of where we are right now. Banks seemingly could be you know, back to ascending higher in terms of where investors just want to want to own them. I, I think you're right, Tim, and it's a, it's a really good observation that going into 2023, you're right, uh, the improvement was there for the valuations, the outlook was actually quite uh, positive, and then, of course, the spring came. And now that we're further away from that um, situation, which was very idiosyncratic as we know now, I think people are coming back looking at this. And you, you bring up another interesting point, though, which is regulation. Because we have to get this final Basel III endgame, which is the name of the last uh, big piece of regulation from the last 20 plus years. And once that is set in stone, uh, which possibly could be later this year or early next year, the banks and investors will know that the regulations are not likely to change much going forward. So once the landscape for regulations is set, no more future changes over the near term. And you don't have any debacles like you had last spring. I think you're onto something about the re-rating. 